build respect for life and family.
Using these four principles, one can't help but notice that they are deeply Christian, deeply Catholic. And when you consider the craziness of the EU and many others promoting their agendas, and you promote the dignity of the family,
Causes may have appeared to many as lost. We concentrate mainly on education. So everything starting from uh, explaining to people about the feet of development, the dignity of human person, uh, also natural family planning, uh, what is contraceptive mentality and why it destroys the husband and wife relationship. What is chastity before marriage? What is chastity in marriage? Uh, we train pro-life leaders. We try to teach people how to break away from the death culture, from the contraceptive mentality. We trained uh, leaders. Uh, for example, last uh, our project, a very small model, Maui Ash in Polish. Uh, it is 10 weeks in the womb model. And uh, we dream to take to everybody, not only in Poland. We send these models also to our friends in, in, to the East, uh, to Russia, to Ukraine, to Belarus, to Lithuania, Latvia, Łotwa, and uh, I was in Kazakhstan last month. Uh, so for our leaders, we trained leaders there, uh, these materials are very, very needed. Poland and Russia have had a very difficult, you know, 500 years. <laughs> the relationship between Poland and Russia has never been good. They've always been fighting each other. Now, when you send a Polish person into Russia, and this Polish person goes and speaks to a Russian audience and says, I'm from Poland, and I love your children. I want Russian babies to be born. 
the Russian people in the audience, I mean, their jaws drop. They're like, here is this foreigner from a country that is a traditional enemy of ours, a country that we've abused in the past, and they say that they love our children. They love our children more than we love our children. That makes a huge impact. And, and people in that country are like, wow, okay, we should really take care of this problem. We should, we should move forward and create pro-family policies, pro-child policies. We travel 2,000 kilometers from one to another village in uh, Kazakhstan. And we met people in these places. But this knowledge is very needed for them. The women, especially women, has a lot of questions. They had problems with uh, positive uh, treatment, uh, medical treatment. On the contraception and abortion is not uh, enough for them. They need uh, knowledge, they need uh, also good gynecologist. And we trained gynecologist. We uh, have special courses, and our friends, not only from Poland, also from Russia, uh, goes from an, one place to another and train such people. And then they organized uh, family centers in their parishes and their family center, uh, maybe also in medical staff, in hospital. As foreigners going into other countries, you can have a bigger in miles to come here with this message. People say, wow. It must be an important message because you traveled so far. You took your time to come here. And, you know, we get on national television. We also give interviews in the media, on television. Eva's office is very often a consultant to journalists who know that if something pro-life is happening, happening anywhere in the world, they can always turn to us for extra information. And... Uh, Winning the confidence of journalists, it's a very important thing, we feel. We always try to help them as much as we can. Obviously, the people in the countries have to take care of their problems. You, know, you can't solve the problems from abroad. But what Human Life International does, in a way, as pro-life missionaries, we go into these countries and we're catalysts. You know? We go there and we point to the issues and we provide materials, we provide stimulus. It's, it's almost like you know, being a little bit of yeast in the dough to help everything blossom, everything grow forward. And of course we work with the church. We go where the Catholic Church is, we support the Catholic Church's activity, which is doing the exact same thing. You know, missionaries there to help these cultures to recover from all the problems that they're facing. So it is big work, big, big work. And it is going, it is going. Because I think one leaflet is sometimes very important. One newspaper is more important. But in the future, it's more important what is in the heart and what is in the brain. On every level, Human Life International is engaged in promoting the culture of life around the world. And even though sometimes we may meet difficulty, we may not accomplish what we are out to accomplish in that moment, we don't give up our work. We don't stop what we're doing. We keep promoting it. We keep preaching it. We keep teaching it. And we keep empowering people to continue their work. As an example of the kind of health care that can arise from a pro-life culture, Human Life International points to women's hospitals in Poland that take a fresh approach to prenatal and obstetric care. It's a model that can serve as an example to reintroduce the pro-life mentality to the medical community at large. What we've seen here in Poland is a wonderful new approach to health care, Catholic health care, hospitals that help women as opposed to giving them abortion, giving them contraception, sterilization. Here in this hospital, we are treating the babies which normally in the other part of the Europe, they would be killed. For example, uh, in United Kingdom, if the woman uh, came to the hospital and they found out during the ultrasound that the baby has a congenital disease, the first uh, uh, advice which is given to the woman it's just to get the abortion. And here in Poland, it's absolutely curable and we cure this baby. So we are leading the, the pregnancy and we are helping the mother. And in the same time, we're preparing the after delivery uh, operation. We are in the contact with the surgeons and they are prepared for the baby. If a child is handicapped, you don't abort that child, you treat that child. You help the mother, you help the child. You give health care that is actually positive, that is actually caring and compassionate. 
every woman which needs a help can find a help here. Um, we have a lot of the nun uh, as a patient, why they are coming here. Because if they are going to the normal hospital, they are treating a little bit differently. But still, the nun is the woman, and if she has the gynecological problem, she needs a, a treatment as the, as the normal woman. So because of that, we gave them the treatment and also gave them more privacy and more understanding, because you know that they, they need it more than the normal patient. You want to be able to provide the best medical care, but the best medical care without love behind it is nothing. You know, you, you really need to have high professional standards and at the same time compassion. Really treat people well. This kind of the hospital, they are going to be a future. Uh, and not only the future for Poland, but I think that for, uh, for the whole world. We are helping. And the uh, woman, pregnant woman, pregnant with the problem, they are looking for the help. So they will find us, they will tell the other about that, that we exist and then that we can help. What you see a lot, you know, in, in modern healthcare is people going for money, you know, and they're just trying to exploit people for as much money as they can, and they're trying to, to the quick solution, the quick fix. So all these culture of death solutions are quick solutions, you know, kill the baby, no problem. Treating the baby is a little bit harder, but of course it brings life. We are choosing the... Uh, the path which is uh, more difficult but give more options and I think that this our way of thinking our way of working our way of treatment it will uh, it will spread it will spread because the women will see the difference to see the difference in the larger picture though requires commitment to the work and much yet remains to be done. It is the responsibility not just of the Polish, the Hungarians, or even other Eastern Europeans. It is a charge to everyone who believes in the cause and is concerned for the future of society as a whole, irrespective of geographical boundaries, to help in any way possible and to remain vigilant until the culture of death has been defeated. This region, this part of Europe, uh, needs missionaries because of the damages caused by the communists, because of the damages of uh, the past uh, decades, we have lost a lot. Spreading the gospel of life is simply bringing more and more people to God, really. And, and I feel it's a struggle to save as many souls as possible. We have to kneel down and pray for the conversion of hearts. Uh, a prayer from each heart, from each family, from each uh, parish, from each diocese, that the Holy Spirit will come from above and will destroy these um, this, uh, walls of evil. All the evils of the world today, each evil is a way that people fall and we have to help them to get up and go in the direction of light. And while the work may be tiring and the odds stacked in the opposition's favor, it's important not to lose hope, not to give up, as the examples of Poland and Hungary have proven. We dream about changes, but uh, for example, I don't believe that it is possible. Mm, uh, so I was born uh, after the Second World War, and our generation had no possibility for changes. So, uh, so we don't believe that uh, it is possible to change also for pro-life because we had uh, a portion on, practically on demand from 56 in Poland. I said to God, I, I have problems. I do not believe that it is possible to change, that, it, that freedom is possible in my country. I have to admit, I had, for, my faith was not strong enough. During the communist times, I didn't think that anything would change. But the people that were praying, you know, tried to convince me that the power of the prayer is great. But when all the changes came, I know they were right, not me. Under the communist era, you know, nobody had any hope. They thought, wow, there's no way to stop this problem. There's no way that we can end this communist regime. They have nuclear weapons, they have 
tanks. I mean, this, this evil is just impossible to fight. And many people think that abortion is kind of that strong. There's no way to stop abortion. It's like this enormous mass of people and money, and there's just no way to end it. But that's not true. With God, everything is possible. And we've seen it in Poland, you know. They were able to reverse the law here. And other countries are moving in that direction. If we think about uh, Poland, we had abortion there for 35 years. And after a long time of people prayed there and uh, uh, doing the grassroots work for the pro-life movements, 100,000 children are saved uh, because of the law. You see what is now. Now it's absolutely different. So we may believe God that all changes are possible if we, we try and we do something to save children. I always like to say that I'm hopeful for Central and Eastern Europe. Why? Because here you have access. Here people are interested in solutions. Uh, in many countries you have to first convince people that there's a problem. And then once they're convinced, then you have to break down all their different barriers of resistance, etc., and then you can start working on the solutions. In Central and Eastern Europe, in the former communist countries, they know that there's a problem. They lived it for 60 years, and as a result, they have come to realize what consequence that has caused. Their own life, their own livelihood, their own culture, their own society is collapsing in front of them. So when I come here now in the post-communist era, I find particularly among the medical profession. Medical doctors do not want abortion. They don't want to be doing them, but they don't know what else to do because this is their tradition. This is what they've been doing for 60 plus years. I was in a hospital, a women's hospital, where the staff performs abortions. I mean, they, they do deliveries, but they also do abortions in the same hospital. We went there to give them a pro-life lecture. And I spoke to them for an hour. All the doctors, all the nurses in the hospital were gathered around and they all participated in abortion gave them a pro-life lecture. At the end of it, we got a standing ovation. A standing ovation. And they said, this is wonderful. We hate to perform abortions. Please, you know, help us in some way. We will offer you a room in this hospital to counsel every woman who's willing so that she doesn't have an abortion. And we went to the local bishop and asked, no, we have this opportunity. We're going to take advantage of this. And he said, absolutely. We'll find volunteers to go and they have a room in the hospital to convince as many people as possible not to have abortions. Can you imagine Planned Parenthood giving you a room to counsel their clients not to have abortions. There are indeed many reasons for hope, but it is becoming clear that our ultimate hope for Central and Eastern Europe, and for the world if we are to regain a true culture of life, lies in the one who alone makes all things possible. The abortion rates are actually going down around the world. Young people are more pro-life than older people. And I think there's a new pro-life generation that is rising up, and with education, uh, with a certain amount of you know, hard work, but certainly with a lot, a lot of prayer, we can move in the direction of a post-abortion world. Each day we go out in love, bring in the light of Christ, it's less of darkness. Uh, we cannot lose if we do it with Him together. We have to provide the way and give the best, and uh, it's up to him when this huge change will come. It's all in God's hands. Uh, we just have to be obedient to him and do his work. I mean, he has already won. We just have to fill in the pages of history. When the pages of tomorrow's history books are written, will they contain the demise of Russia, of Hungary, Poland, of Eastern Europe as a whole? Or will they chronicle the culture of life's triumph over the forces and ideologies that sought to destroy these countries? The future remains unwritten, but the blueprints for victory have been drawn up by the author of life itself. And it's our own adherence to these blueprints that will determine the ultimate outcome. Regardless, our concern should not be whether we are victorious, but how best we are able to serve in the fight, and never to surrender, no matter how unfavorable the odds no matter how great the temptation. Do I set out, yes, to win? Fight the fight, run the race. But I know that I won't always succeed. But that should not stifle my passion, stifle my desire. Instead, it should motivate and empower me to keep going. Even if we failed, 
we still have to have the good feeling that everything which we were able to do, everything has been done. Mother Teresa, you know, after winning the Nobel Peace Prize, when I believe it was a reporter that asked her a question, do you think your life really will have made a difference after you're gone? And she said very clearly that I never said I was out to change the world, but I was to be one drop of pure love in God's mighty ocean. But if you join me, there could be two drops. We should not think in terms like being successful. We should think in terms like being fruitful. And that's always uh, necessary that we think about the cross. It's for God, there are no shortcuts. We will go step by step, and even if we have to suffer sometimes, you know, but step by step, he will bring back the values of, of uh, being pro-life, pro-family. It depends on, on God the Creator, it depends on Christ, and uh, the most important is to work and not to let die this nation, not to let die our own families, not to let die this society, not to let die Europe.